Welcome back to Raymond Lee Jewelers web series. I'm Liz and today I'll be talking about all things fake. Our posts about knockoff and replica identification and education are always popular on our blogs. So today's web series will give you further insight into spotting fakes. First up is the Rolex Melgas. You may have already seen Raymond Lee Jewelers video on how to spot a fake Rolex and those principles still apply. You should be on the lookout for inordinately low prices, shady internet sellers with little or no buyer feedback, and stock images of their Rolexes. When it comes to the watch itself, remember to look for the quality craftsmanship of a Rolex. If you see blurry text, uneven lettering or arrangement on the dial, or a shoddy bracelet, you're not looking at a genuine Rolex. If you're in person, hold the watch in your hands. It should be heavy. And another surefire way to spot a fake is to open the watch's case back and look for the Rolex movement that is the hallmark of the finest luxury timepiece. Any seller who refuses to open the case and show you the movement is not someone who you want to be doing business with. The Melgaus itself is one of the easier fakes to spot, especially the Green Crystal 50th Anniversary Edition. The Green Crystal is actually one of the first ways you can, ca you can check for authenticity. This fake Melgaus is a relatively good knockoff. But when you examine the crystal closely, you can see that its manufacturer has simply painted a thin green line around the inside of the bezel so it will reflect back on the crystal's edge. From the top, this trick would be passable, especially when on a wearer's wrist. But a genuine Rolex Melgaus green crystal will be green on its inner and outer edge. It will also cast a green glow over the entire dial, but won't appear to be a green cellophane-like reflection like this one. Another key aspect of the Melgaus Green Crystal is the three orange markers at 3, 6, and 9. These markers should be a light orange, not peach like this fakes, and should never appear faded, dirty, painted on, or labeled on. Additionally, the orange color of the lightning bolt second hand should be a vibrant orange. This fakes coloring comes close, but is obviously off when compared to a Melgaus. Additionally, look out for fakes with the wrong lugs. The Milgaus is curved to wrap around the wrist slightly. These are too pointy. Moreover, the case size itself is off. This fake's case is too thin and too small when compared to the Milgaus. And, as is true with most Rolex fakes, the knockoff is entirely too light. A genuine Milgaus is solid, substantial in the hand and on the wrist, and has a case that measures 40 millimeters in diameter. You can watch our video on how to spot a fake Rolex for more tips, but if you ever have any suspicion or sense that something is off when buying a pre-owned Rolex, it probably is. You're better off dealing with a more reputable seller or visiting a jewelry store that is authorized to sell pre-owned Rolexes. Our next fake is another good knockoff, but not good enough. This Hublot Big Bang wannabe was confiscated after an enterprising shady character tried to sell it. At first glance, it passes all of the Big Bang litmus tests. H-shaped screws, steel H on the second hand, and rubber-tipped pushers and crown. This fake even has the Big Bang signature Kevlar middle layer on its case, and the proper texture and stripping on its rubber strap, something that cheap fakes rarely get right. You should look for a dial that isn't checkerboard texture, markers that don't have a vertical groove through the middle, and a ceramic bezel that is too thin and too small to spot a fake Big Bang. But again, this knockoff passes all of those tests. So, how do we know this Big Bang isn't the bang for your buck? The movement. All luxury watches are prized for their precise movements, but the Big Bangs is even easier to identify thanks to its skeleton case back. The first giveaway is the Hublot Geneva writing on the movement's rotor. It's too thin, too dark, and imprecise. Note the weird space between the E and the V in Geneva. Additionally, it isn't engraved onto the rotor, as it would be on a genuine Big Bang. The Hublot H logo under the rotor is also too thick and too dark. The next clue on the movement is the shape and size of the rotor's central part. This fakes is rough and has saw teeth and is too small. The genuine Big Bangs is smooth and has three rings, the smallest around the screw, another small smooth ring, and then the outer ring connected to the rotor. The movement itself is also lacking the fine adjuster, the piece that bridges the gap between these two small cogs. As with all luxury watches, the movement will always give away the fake. This is the biggest reason not to buy a knockoff. 
Not only are you funding the illegal and often immoral organizations that create these cheap imitations, you're wasting your money. Fake luxury watches aren't inexpensive. For a decent fake, you're likely spending several hundred dollars. However, that chunk of change is buying you an essentially disposable product. When the shoddy fake inevitably stops working properly, there is no guarantee of service, no warranty, and no assurance of repair. There's no one to stand behind the product because it isn't something to be proud of. The pride in manufacturing luxury timepieces accompanies a guarantee of service and of longevity. That's what you're truly paying for when you buy brands like Rolex and Hublot. When it comes to jewelry, however, you're sometimes paying more for a name simply for its cachet. That's not to say that designer jewelry isn't gorgeous or quality craftsmanship. Just the opposite. Raymond Lee Jewelers believes that some designer jewelry is to be treasured and knows that it is inherently more valuable thanks to its luxury brand. This is what makes it even more important that the jewelry you purchase from these designers is the real deal. Unfortunately for one customer, hers was not. If you're a regular reader of our blog, you'll already know about our customer whose first date led her to believe that he gifted her a genuine Cartier Love charity bracelet. When our customer came in to sell it and found out it was fake, she knew that it, just like her past suitor, wasn't good enough for her and wanted nothing to do with it. Luckily for us and for you, it can now be used as both a cautionary tale and an educational tool. The genuine Cartier Love Charity Bracelet is either one white gold miniature love bracelet or is two love bracelets, white gold and pink gold interlocked. The cord should be silk, not cheap looking or feeling, and never frayed. Some slight signs of wear may be visible if you're purchasing pre-owned, but overall the silk should still be in good condition. You'll also notice that the two pink golds, like love bracelets on this fake, are mottled and tarnished looking, and are also the wrong size. The genuine Cartier Love Charity Bracelet's gold rings are tiny, but surprisingly heavy because they're genuine gold. The rings are also not stamped with Cartier's signature, nor the serial number that would be present on any real Cartier Love Charity Bracelet. You can read the post about our fake Love Charity Bracelet to learn more about how to spot other signs of fraud on the box and bag, but these tips should help you identify the bracelet itself. The importance of authenticating your pre-owned jewelry can't be emphasized enough. As I mentioned before, when you buy a fake, you're wasting your money. Moreover, you're wearing a fake around all the time, you're constantly going to be conscious of the fact that you're wearing a fake. Eventually, it's more likely that you'll upgrade to the genuine article, spending even more money. It's always better to just slowly save up for that dream piece you've been eyeing, rather than settle for an unsatisfying imitation. Again, if you're ever uncertain about the piece that you're contemplating buying, air your concerns to the seller. Any reputable seller or dealer will be able to answer all of your questions, will be happy to show you that their product is authentic, and won't bat an eyelash at providing any certificates of authenticity that they may have. If they can't, then it's fine for you to spend your money elsewhere with a reputable seller or authorized dealer. I hope that you found this week's tips useful and that you tune in next week for a Rolex overview.